Guess what? It is four o'clock and it's time to rock. It's time for our third week of our STEAM Labs presented by the Technobus and the You Make Miami staff. Um, we're having a blast presenting these. I mean, I'm not doing anything. I'm just standing here talking, but these people who are on the screen are the ones doing the presenting. So today we're gonna to be presenting all of you guys, right? Everybody, Dinah, Hector, yes. all Jayden, of us presenting. Ashley, uh, yes. who did I miss? Everybody? You got us all. They're Jayden. all gonna be presenting. I said Jaden, yeah, Jaden. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, everybody's gonna be presenting today. We're getting ready to start with our, um, I think I coined it correctly when we're calling it our audio labs. We're gonna be showing you some really cool stuff. So I'm gonna turn it over to our beautiful Library, Miami-Dade Public Library System staff. Make sure that you check us out on mdpls.org and follow us also on our You Make Miami uh, social media pages. Okay, so take it away, guys. Hey, guys. So that's me, Dinah. Not Dana, not Diana, but Dinah. So, okay, guys, I actually wanted to share some careers with you guys. So I'm going to share my screen. Just bear uh, with us a little bit here and hold on. Give me one. Sorry. And I had to prepare that. There you go. So I prepared this mini little PowerPoint. Before we get started today on our lesson on GarageBand, I wanted to also take the time to talk to you guys about a little bit of career options out there that you may or may have not heard of. Um, and just to get you going with some uh, some skills for you to develop in GarageBand. So we're pretty much giving you some introduction skills, okay? But before that, we're gonna talk a little bit about careers. So some career options in the music industry, we have our record producer, um, that's also known as the music producer, the track producer, as the person who oversees the entire production of the recording process. Um, there's audio technicians. Um, those are the persons who also are known for the audio and live recording engineer. That's a really long name for it. So I just wrote it down for you guys. Um, that, that person actually ensures the sound quality, right? And then there's your sound designer. Um, this person actually is a person who creates sound effects. They create they record them or they create live audio effects like a galloping horse or um, an atmosphere effect such as uh, traffic sounds that you hear in movies. Those are the type of uh, sound engineers. And then you have your, um, your sound mixer. This person is mostly used for like, uh, uh, they have, um, I'm sorry, they're, they are also not to be confused for a sound editor. Um, they rather, they manage the volume and the sound quality. So these are pers uh, personally people who work more like for live music uh, performances, right? For, for concerts and things like that. Um, then you have your digital audio editor. Um, this job involves making digital audio edits such as cutting, copying, splicing, and mixing. So get a music production. Huh? Hello. Um, so now, uh, you know, going into GarageBand, we're going to be able to kind of develop these sort of skills. But before that, um, there's also other things that you may be able to or Turn it off. Give me your thing, Mimi. Um, such as like maybe a songwriter, that's somebody who specializes in composing music and writing a certain part for like an instrument or a song. And of course you have your, your composers, these are orchestra composers who produce for um, film soundtracks like Danny, um, Danny Elfin, who's very, who wrote and composed The Simpsons and also the music for The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, if you remember from last time we did the audio, um, the stop motion animation. 
um, the Nightmare Before Christmas was also created that way. Remember that? Um, and then, of course, if you're interested in DJing and being a performer, um, these skills also connect with that. Um, I personally, myself, as I have, have had, had some experiences in um, voiceover, uh, like commercials and jingles like that, so you could possibly develop those skills. And I thought I'd throw in some, a couple last ones, and just to talk to you about a little bit of the background that I come from. I am, first and foremost, I started as a singer. Um, I've done band, so if any of you are in band, awesome. I play an instrument, I play the trombone, so I did a lot of jazz and march stuff, so that was a lot of fun. But I also wanted to talk to you guys about other careers like music business, music industry, um, the touring industry, you have the film music career, you have music health careers, and you have, the, of course, the recording industry careers. Um, and of course, I have a few um, of my favorite jazz artists uh, that you may or may not know of, but if you do not know of them, I encourage you to go and listen to them. Um, that's Billie Holiday and Mr. Louis um, D. Armstrong, who is a jazz uh, trumpeter and composer and vocalist. Uh, so anyways, I'm going to pass it over on to Jaden, and he's going to um, open it up with GarageBand on iPad, okay? Let me stop sharing. All right, Dinah, thank you so much for all that really useful information on careers. So without further ado, we're going to hop right into GarageBand and start getting familiar with it. Give me one second. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Fantastic. All right, so welcome to GarageBand for iOS. Just so you know, because this is the mobile version of GarageBand, it works on both the iPad and the iPhone. So if you have either or, the interface is gonna look exactly the same, whether it's your iPad or your phone. So when you open up the app for the first time, this is the first window that you'll see. This is your gallery view. As you can see, there's a couple projects that I've named here that I've worked on previously. And here you'll be able to see everything that you've worked on so far. So to create a new project, we're gonna hit the big blue plus sign that says create song. Once we click on that, it's gonna bring us to this menu. So you'll notice at the top center, there's a section that says live loops and one that says tracks. We're currently on the tracks section, that's highlighted up there. And on tracks, you get to pick from a series of virtual instruments. As you can see, we have audio recorder in case you want to plug in a microphone. We have the amp if you have an external instrument you want to plug in. And then we have virtual drums, piano, and an assortment of strings as well. So just to get us started, we're going to hop into the guitar first. And you'll notice that for each instrument, there's four different categories at the bottom. We're just going to stick with smart guitar for the time being. Right. So once I hit smart guitar, you're going to see what looks like a virtual guitar on the screen. Before we start tinkering around with it and playing with it, I'm going to get you guys familiar with the interface of the app. So we're going to start with the top left corner. There's four icons up there. You'll notice a little page with the corner folded in. That's going to take you back to your gallery view. So if I tap on that, you'll notice it'll take me back to where I started. The icon next to it, which is two little squares with a bigger square in the center, this will take you back to your tracks and live loops. The icon next to that is a series of little lines. That'll take you to your timeline view. So let's see what happens when I tap on that. The instrument disappears, so you can just focus on whatever is recorded on your timeline. Bring that back. And then lastly on that side, we have our master controls, which are the little lines with the circles on them. When I tap on that, it'll bring this little side of view window, which actually here I'm going to turn down the track volume so it's not super loud for you guys when I play it back. And here you can pretty much control the volume of everything in your project. You tap on it again to minimize it. And in the center, we have the playback button, the play button, and the record button. The record button is the red circle right there. 
To the left of it is the play button and then kind of like the rewind or the playback button. Next to that, you'll notice a little blue triangle over here. That's our metronome. So what a metronome does is kind of like a ticking sound that counts. For example, one, two, three, four, that helps count the tempo and keep with the beat of your song. Whenever you hit record, the metronome will automatically count down four, three, two, one, and then start recording. All the way to the right-hand side, you'll notice a little loop-de-loop -loop icon, like this one right here. This is another shortcut to your live loops, which I'm gonna get to in a moment. If you want to combine live loops, which are pre-recorded, already made sounds, with some of your live sounds that you make with the instruments on the spot, you can mix and mash live loops with your recorded played music in the same project. Next to that, we have a little gear, which is our settings. This is something a little bit more advanced for you music people. Uh, here you can change the tempo, the time signature, what key that you're playing in. But today we're just gonna focus on the basics and just skimming the surface of this app. So we're not gonna get too deep into that right now. And then last but not least, this icon is super helpful. It's a little question mark all the way on the top right hand side. If you get lost at any point and don't remember what certain buttons do, you can always tap on this question mark and it's pretty much a guide that makes all these little sticky notes appear and tell you what everything is. So this is a really great point of reference if you're new to this or you don't remember something from this lesson, you can always click on that little question mark as a point of reference to help you out. You can tap on it again to make the notes disappear. So now that we've gone over all the buttons in here, I'm going to show you guys a little sample of how to play with these virtual instruments. So as you can see, we have a guitar. The cool thing about the iPad and iPhone version of GarageBand is that you're using a touch screen. So it's very hands-on. You get to interact with your instrument as though it was actually in front of you. So I'll demonstrate. To play this guitar, you can actually slide your finger across the strings and strum it as though it was an actual guitar, like so. That's pretty cool, right? Hope you guys can hear that. You'll also notice that when I strum the guitars, they kind of stay vibrating for a little while. One way to get them to stop making the sound is to press all of them at the same time at the end, just like you would on a real guitar. So that's if you just want to strum it manually. You'll notice there's a little knob on the right hand side that says autoplay and it has a one, two, three, and four on it. So I'm going to put it on one. And you'll notice the strings disappear when I do that. So what autoplay does is that it automatically plays the strings in a particular chord that you press on automatically, like so. Can everyone hear that? Is it too low? Yes. Perfect. So you'll notice that when I tap on one of the chords, it automatically plays the guitar in that chord. If you're like me and you don't know how to play any instruments, because I'm not musically inclined at all, this is super useful. And this is what's really cool about GarageBand. You can play instruments and create a song even though you've never played an instrument in your life. So that's just one example. So now that we've played with the guitar, I'm going to show you guys another instrument. So on the top left corner, I'm going to click on the little two squares with the big square to take us back to our other track. We're going to go into piano this time. Smart piano. And as you can see, the format looks a little uh, similar to the guitar where you have all the different chords here. If I drag my finger across the chord, it plays like a run. And when I tap on it, like this plucking kind of sound. Same thing in autoplay. I turn the knob. It'll automatically play a little melody for you. So it's pretty cool. So you'll notice in any of the smart instruments, you'll always have the option to either manually play something on your own or you can use autoplay and cheat a little bit and use the different chords to play a pre-recorded sound. Another trick is within each instrument, there's different variations of that instrument. So right now I have it set to grand piano. 
I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to tap on Grand Piano. And you'll notice I will bring up a menu of all these other different types of pianos. So let's say you didn't want a traditional piano sound, and maybe you wanted something more funky and electronic, like a keyboard. I'm going to go down to SS, and I'm going to go to Arcade Synth, because I want some 8-bit video game sound. Once I hit done. You'll notice it sounds kind of like an arcade. So these are different sound effects that you can play with when you're changing out your instrument. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? So I'm going to go over to drums now. So in the drums, I'm going to show you a quick little preview of different versions of drums you can use. One of them being the smart drums. So what's cool about this is that you'll notice on the right hand side, there's the kick, the snare, claps, hi-hats, cymbals, and shakers. What you can do with this is drag and drop these different instruments on different parts of the square that you see in the middle. And depending on where in the square you drag them, it'll make different sounds. I'll demonstrate. So you'll see that by dragging it in different parts of the square, depending on whether I want the instruments to sound loud in certain parts, quiet in others, simple or complex, it'll create different kinds of beats. You'll also notice on the bottom left-hand side, there's a dice. If you click on the dice, it'll roll the dice and create a randomized beat for you, like so. Pretty simple. So this is a great way to get you started if you don't know where to start and you want to take advantage of some of these pre-made sounds that already come in GarageBand. Sometimes you can randomize them or shuffle them just to get you some inspiration to help you get started. So I'm going to go back once again to our other versions of the drums. And now we're going to look at acoustic drums. This is very similar to what we saw with the piano and the guitar, where it seems like you have the virtual instrument in front of you. In this one, you can tap on the drums to play them, like the touchscreen. <laughs> I'm doing this just by tapping my fingers on the drums on the screen. Pretty cool. Let me go back again. Again, we're just skimming the surface. I'm trying to show you guys a little preview of different bits and pieces of different instruments you can play with. The last one on the drums I'll touch up on is the beat sequencer. So once we're here, you'll notice those same little icons we saw before, the snare, the drums, the clapping, they're all highlighted in different colors on the left. So the way that the beat sequencer works is that there's all these rainbow colored squares on the screen. By tapping the squares, you can tap anyone you like, it'll start creating that sound. For example, So you'll notice that it'll play the beat where those squares are highlighted. I did this just by tapping on the squares and selecting where I wanted the beat to start. You can also do this by dragging your finger across the squares and selecting a bunch of them at once. The power button on the bottom center will turn it on and off. Let's see what this does. That sounds pretty cool. Once again, just like the drums that we looked at previously, there's also a dice icon at the very bottom of the screen. It looks like a little square with five dots on it. This will randomize the beat for you. So again, if you're not sure where to start and you just want to play a random beat, you can always shuffle them around by rolling the dice. This is a good introduction to lead us into live loops, which is what I'm going to talk about next. So I'm going to exit out of the screen by tapping the two small squares with the big at the top left corner. So now at the top center, instead of being on track, we're going to go over to live loops. So within the live loops, there's different 
genres for you to choose from. So depending on what kind of music you're going for, maybe you want to do rock, maybe you want to do R&B or soul, there's a lot of different packages to choose from. And what's cool about GarageBand is as the software updates and new packages get added, they're all free to download. So you don't always have a growing library of sound. So let's see, I'm gonna play around with something and I'm gonna pick a genre. Let's go with edges and angles. So once you click on a package, it's gonna show all these little squares, some of them green, some of them blue. You'll notice if you look within the squares, there's different wavelengths within them. You'll notice some of them have a really wide circle while some of them have a circle with little dots in it. Each of these will have a different beat and sound. On the left-hand side, you'll see which instrument goes with each of those sounds. We can see a couple of keyboards here. We see like this DJ disc thing. We see vocals, etc. So. For this part of our tutorial, the volume is a little bit louder on this section than it is everywhere else. So I warn you all guys, please turn your volume down when I tell you that I'm going to play the music because it will be very loud. So all of these little squares are arranged in columns going vertically. There's little arrows at the very bottom of the screen. And when I tap on one of those arrows, it's gonna play all the boxes going up vertically in that row because they've already been arranged together. So I'm going to demonstrate and show you guys. Make sure to turn the volume of your headphones down now. I'm going to play in three, two, that arrow it played all of the little boxes in that column so these are all pre-selected because GarageBand has decided well these bunch of sounds already sound really great together once again you can use this as a foundation and then change around the live loop in this column and mix and match them however you like so I will demonstrate I'm going to once again play the row and then I'm going to start tapping on other squares and then the rows and mixing and matching them around in three two As you can see, I mix and match a couple of different sounds, then I hit the red button to record, and now I have the music playing that I can play back. I've recorded something that I can start to work with. When I tap on the icon right next to the microphone at the top left corner, to the right of the microphone, right here, it'll take me to my timeline. So rather than looking at those little boxes, now that I've recorded something, I can go in here individually to each of the sounds that I chose and edit it and continue to work on it from here. By tapping on any of these sounds, you'll have this little menu come up. Here you can cut, copy, paste, or even delete an entire track if you don't want it anymore, rename it, etc. You'll notice at the end of this, there's a little arrow on the white bracket at the end of this green rectangle. This, if you drag it, will pretty much continue to loop it. By looping, meaning that it's gonna repeat over and over again for as long as you wanna drag it on the timeline. You can also touch and grab and drag things along your timeline in case you wanna put them in a different order or have them appear later on in the track, et cetera. If I already have something pre-recorded and I wanted to make some other pre-made live loops into it, we can click on the loop de loop icon on the top right corner and bring back our life loop. I brought this up earlier and now I'll go just a little bit further in. If you wanted to narrow down your live loops and pick 
specific song, you can separate them either by specific instrument, genre, or descriptors. If you click on instrument, let's say I specifically only want guitar. I can click on guitar and it'll give me all the guitar live loops that GarageBand has to offer. If I want to go by genre, pick genre. Let's say I want dubstep. I pick dubstep and it's going to give me all these dubstep sound effects. You can preview any of these sounds just by tapping on them once. And tap on it again to make it stop. If you pick one that you like, you can also favorite them or click the little heart icon in case you want to come back to them later. If you want to add one to your timeline, just hold and drag it and you can put it anywhere in your timeline that you like and let go. And now I've added an extra live loop into my timeline. Jane, so I, I, I want to mention that a lot of uh, really famous artists actually use GarageBand to like make a, a demo of their songs that they're working on with their, their bands that they're going on tour with or they're getting ready to go into the studio. So it's a very powerful mm -hmm. tool. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe one of Adele's songs was actually made in GarageBand. I think Hello was made in GarageBand. So it's pretty crazy. Like you can pretty much produce a full-fledged song from this app in your bedroom. It's pretty powerful. It's Definitely. crazy. <laughs> yes. So that's pretty much my overview of the mobile version of GarageBand. Before I switch it over to my colleague, I will show you guys a quick example of a song that I made using Life Loops. So you can see here on the timeline, I have a bunch of different sounds all stacked together. Let's see how it all sounds together. you guys enjoyed that little sort of semi-performing awesome. thing but take it from me I don't know how to play any instruments I don't know how to read sheet music I'm not musically inclined in any way but I was able to create a song in GarageBand because that's just how much you can do with it it's really cool so that being said I'm going to pass it over again to Dinah who's going to take us into the desktop version of GarageBand. Hey guys. So now we're going to take you into the uh, desktop. I'm so sorry. First and foremost, thank you, Jaden, for that wonderful introduction to GarageBand on iPad. And now we're going to take you on to the desktop. Um, Hector, let's go ahead and share the screen. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, so if you are on your desktop and you have GarageBand, there are two options you could go uh, to open GarageBand. So the first option is going to be through your application. So if you open your Finder, go ahead and open your Finder. It could be on your dock. Just in case if the GarageBand little icon is not on your dock, you could go ahead and find it on your on the Finder and you could go ahead and look for it like that. But in this case, we do have it on our dock, so we're gonna go and click off of uh, the Finder and go and find the, okay. So now we're gonna open GarageBand and go to your dock and here. And so this is the screen you're going to uh, share when you first open GarageBand, or you're going to see when you first open GarageBand. Uh, but if we notice on the tabs on the left hand side, we're going to have new project. But first, let's begin with the second tab. We're going to go ahead and click on learn to play. 
So in Learn to Play, you're gonna be able to find uh, some information, some cool lessons here. You could go to guitar lessons, you could uh, go into piano lessons, and you also have your artist lessons. So if you don't know how to use GarageBand or you wanna get better on some sort of instrument like a guitar, go on here and get your first lessons. Now let's go ahead and click on the lesson store. Let's say you already completed certain, that certain lesson and you wanna go and get some more. Well, you could go ahead and click on lesson store and open the guitar lessons. And in here, you're going to be able to find other series of uh, lessons. So you have eight lessons, five and seven lessons. So you'll start from your basic, your rock and your blues guitar. And you could click on here and you see the little download button. You could click on the download button and be able to retrieve that lesson. Now let's go into Recents tab. In your Recents tab here, if we were working on some sort of project, it would show immediately here. But as you could see, it's cleared, right? Now let's go into the Projects temp Templates. Here, it's sort of the same option as new project, but here we have a little bit more options. We could begin with the keyboard collection, an amp collection, voice, and hip hop, electronic, or songwriter collection. It's your choice. Now, let's go back into new project. And here we're going to cho uh, choose empty project. Once we select our empty project, we're going to choose and open that. And this is gonna bring you to choosing your track type. Now, when you first begin on GarageBand, this is the screen you're going to see. And you're gonna be able to choose from software instrument, audio, or drummer. As you could see, the software instrument has a mini keyboard. So anything, if you have a keyboard connected, you could use that. You could click on this. Or if you have an, an instrument, such as a guitar or an amp, or even just your voice, you could click on audio. And of course, there's a drummer. But for today, we're going to start with our software instrument. And we're going to click here and create. Now I'm gonna pass it on to my colleague, Hector, who's gonna take you in a little bit further and explain the interface of GarageBand to get you started on your first music project. Go ahead, Hector. Thank you, Dinah, thank you so much for that. Uh, so when you first start a project, uh, if you're starting from the beginning, uh, you may be seeing the musical typing, which is basically allows you to type on your computer keyboard uh, to create the music. Now, if you have a MIDI keyboard, you should be able to connect it to the USB port on the computer so that you're able to play the music. So right now I'm gonna hide this because uh, my co coworker Eddie is gonna go into the actual music playing part. So to hide it, you go into view. Um, actually, hold on. Yeah, hide musical type on under window, command K. That will close that little window. So this is the whole screen and I'm gonna go over all of the buttons right here in the top, which is the, um, the way that you can control everything on GarageBand. I'm gonna start with the very first one here on the left. This is the library button and it looks like a little file cabinet. And when you press it, you can see that you have a multitude of instruments available to you. We have a bass, we have some drums, a guitar, and within those, you have other options. So within the bass, for example, we have finger style bass, or we have upright studio bass. Now, if you see this little download arrows, that means you can download those instruments. Now, they do take a little bit of space on your computer, so make sure that you have enough space on your hard drive because they do add a little bit of uh, space on your computer. So that's the, you can see that there's many different uh, instruments available and you can switch back and forth. You can add multiple instruments and I'm gonna show you that a little bit later, later on. So that's this first one, the library. So it allows you to choose an instrument. Now the next one to the left is a little question mark and it is very similar to what Jaden showed us on the iPad. So when you click on it, you're gonna see that you get all these little yellow um, labels that basically describe to you everything that's available. So for example, this button tells you, oh, it's the editor button, and it tells you what you can do with it, and the keyboard shortcut if it's available. 
So this is very useful when you're beginning. You might want to keep this on uh, when you're first starting out so that you can tell what each uh, button does. So I'm going to turn it off right now. The next one to the right is the smart controls button. So when you click on it, you're going to see that there's a little panel or window that comes up from the bottom. And that basically allows you to control the volume, um, the equalizer. If you have effects, you can also add them down here. So this is very useful to adjust mainly the volume and the effects that you have. All right, I'm going to hide that right now. Move on to the edit button. So the editors, uh, when you click on them, um, there's two different types of editors. When you have software instruments, like the, the green ones that we showed at the beginning, um, those you are able to edit the sound. So you, you, when you play a sound, you can change the pitch or the duration or the note. So you're using your keyboard connected to the computer, it allows you to change that sound. So you have the way to look at it under piano roll. Or if you know music, you can use the score and that'll display actual musical notes. If you're able to read music, that's really, really useful. Um, so that's, that's very useful to, to use. Uh, you can also transpose. So if let's say that you know a little bit about music and you write your song in a certain key, you can change that and adjust the key. So that's very, very useful. Now to the right is this one right here. This is the transport button. And this is very common with all um, devices. You know, you can rewind, you can go forward, you can stop, you can play the song. The red is to record. And this one right next is called the cycle button. And when I click on it, you see there's a little yellow area and you can drag that around. And what that allows you to do is you can concentrate on that specific part so that you can edit there or you can modify it. If you have a long, long uh, piece of music, you can just focus on certain parts and you can move this around by clicking and dragging. So you can work on your vocals and you can work on your uh, drums or uh, whatever part of the song you're working on. So that's the cycle and you turn it on and off. If it's grayed out, that means it's off. If it's uh, yellow, that means it's on. Uh, right next to this, this is the LCD. This tells you the beats, uh, the tempo, and you can click and drag the tempo to make the song faster or slower. You can drag it up and down. If you know music, you can click on this and you can choose the key that you're on. And major and minor keys are available. And finally, down here in the bottom, there's a little arrow. You display it. You can have beats and the project information, which is the default. You can just have beats and time if you want to have it that way or just individually beats or just time. Time is very useful if you're doing a voiceover recording or you're doing podcasting so that you can see how many, uh, how many minutes and how many seconds of your recording and you can uh, adjust that to your movie. Uh, right next to that, there's a little tuning fork, which in this case is turned off by default. Uh, but if you were to play a guitar, an acoustic guitar or something like that, or even an electric guitar that is plugging into your computer, you can tune the instrument. It will display the, the note when you press on the, on the string and you can adjust it on your guitar or your bass so that you can uh, tune your instrument. Um, these two right next to it, this is the one, two, three, four. So when you start recording and you press this red button, if you have this turned on, it's a little countdown. So it will start clicking one, two, three, four, and then it'll start recording. So that's really nice, especially if you're gonna start singing, because if you had this off and you press the red button, then it's going to start recording right away. So this gives you a little bit of time to prep up and get comfortable or maybe even take a deep breath before you start singing. Uh, so it's very, very useful. And finally on this is the little metronome. Um, this is very important when you're practicing, if you wanna keep playing to a specific time, uh, you wanna make sure that this is turned on so that you're playing on time. Um, also right next to it, this is the master volume. So this control, it controls all of the audio um, on the tracks. Right now we only have one track, but you can add other tracks. If I click on this little plus sign, you can choose another instrument. I'm gonna pick a, a software instrument and a piano you can see. So each instrument has its own volume. 
you can mute an instrument if you click on this little, uh, it has a little speaker with a diagonal line that's to mute. Or you can solo, let's say that we have three or four instruments and we, we're not gonna be muting each one individually. So you can just focus on one particular instrument at a time. That's very, very useful. Again, this is the master volume. So this, control, this controls the volume of all the individual tracks. And the last three buttons we're gonna be taking a look at are on the top right. This is the notepad. This is very, very useful. Um, you can copy and paste your lyrics, for example, if you wrote them on a Word document or any text document, or you can just start typing here so that uh, you don't have to be switching back and forth between uh, your, your Word document and the, and the program. You can just type it or copy it in here, and that way you have your lyrics and stuff, so you can work on that. Um, so it's very, very useful, and you can turn it off. And of course, it has the same features of uh, any Word document. You can make the, the, the letters uh, bigger, you can uh, change the color, so you can do all kinds of stuff. So that's the little notepad. I'm gonna hide that. This is the loops button, which is also very similar to the iPad version. When you click on it, it, dis it displays all the loops that you have installed in your computer. And we have different types of uh, loops. You can uh, choose by instrument. Uh, if you're looking for a bass, for example, or if you're looking for a guitar, you can look by genre as well. For example, if you like hip hop music, you have these. Let me see if I can play this. I don't know if you can hear that. But when you click on it, it plays the sound and you have the little buttons down here in the bottom. You can adjust the volume so that you can play it back. And also you can favorite the same way that, um, that the iPad version so that you can keep your favorite uh, loops um, on your garage band so you have easy access for those, okay? And then finally, the last button that we're gonna look at is here the media button, which is on the top. So you have access to other uh, programs, other um, projects that you have on GarageBand. You can call them back. You can import songs from iTunes as well, if you want to use that as a basis. Or you also have movies. Let's say that you wanted to do voiceover or add the music to a, a video clip. Um, let's say that you recorded something from a video game and you want to do like a little um, theme music uh, for it. You can add that in here and drag it into your project so that you can time the music to the video. So that's really, really cool. Okay, and then finally, uh, down here beneath these three buttons, we have the Zoom tool, which is gonna become really useful once you start adding and recording your instruments. There's a little switch right here that you can move to your right or to your left so that you can zoom in and zoom out of your project. All right, so that pretty much concludes this part of the presentation. And now the really cool part, Eddie is gonna show us how to record songs uh, using a MIDI keyboard. All right, turning it over to you, Eddie. Well, Hector, thank you very much for that explanation. Thank you, Dinah, for doing such a great job explaining. And Jaden, wow, great job. And Ashley, thank you for helping out with the chat and then explaining different things. And Marlon for hosting this this wonderful meeting. I'm going to be uh, teaching you guys. My name is Edward and I work, I'm a library media project instructor working for the library. Some of you have seen me before, those of you have come to the previous webinars. And this is, I, I have a MIDI keyboard that I'm going to, that I have hooked up to GarageBand. And the MIDI keyboard is a musical instrument digital interface. And I will explain that a little bit more. Let me share my screen. Here we go. All right. Let me see. Can everybody see my screen? Let's see. Yes. Perfect. So Hector explained all the buttons. Jaden did an awesome job with beats and showing all sorts of different neat, neat functions. I'm gonna show you guys, if you wanna just record something very simple, let's say you're a piano player or keyboardist, you just want to get started. One of the most basic, basic songs, and I'm, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard it, it, it's called Heart and Soul. Heart and Soul is, is one that you guys have probably heard if we're beginners on the, on the piano or on the keyboard. 
And it's one that was uh, made famous in that movie Big with Tom Hanks. Remember when there was this long piano on the floor of FAO Schwartz, so that, that toy store, and then Tom Hanks was stepping on it and playing the song? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you guys how to record that song and using two layers, one for the left hand, one for the, the bottom part that Tom Hanks was stepping on, and one from the owner of FAO Schwartz at that from that movie big on the right hand. So first things first, and thank you Hector again for explaining all these things. If we want to record, we have to click on the red button right here. So I'm going to record the first part of this song. And so now I press stop and now I have a whole bunch of different portions of the recording here now every one of these little things you see here is one note that I played and the longer it is the more that note was played as you can see, you can stretch the note and bring it, bring it down. Now what I want to do is I just want to record that first little part. So I'm going to show you guys how to, how to cut this in, into the piece that I want. So I'm going to show you how to split the regions, which is right here. And we're, but first, you see where it says playhead? That's this thing right here. This is the playhead. So wherever this is at, that's where I want to cut. And Command T is the shortcut, or I go to Edit and Split Regions of Playhead. So first I'm going to find out where I want to cut this. So let's see, I push Play. So let's say I want to cut it there. I go Edit, Split Regions, and now if you notice, this is one part and this is another part. So I want to take away this one. I just press delete. And now it's gone. So if I want to pick the part in the middle to use. So I stop it here. And I go edit and split. And let me see here, edit. Split regions of playhead. And there you go. Now it's this is one one part and there's the other part. So I'm gonna cut this one out by pressing delete. And you can move your 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 music around too. So in this case, there's a little bit of the part that I that I had cut out. And you can take this and drag it a little bit as well. I want to try that one more time. And one of the one of the beautiful things about GarageBand is that once once you once you have the piece the part that you want to use, you can press you can press L to loop it. So I want to loop this and I have here. Now notice it's going a little bit slow. You can change the tempo. So if I want to make it go faster, I just raise the tempo on the top of the screen. So I think that's good enough. And with that, now that I have the right hand, I mean the left hand, now I want to record the right hand. So I press this little plus right here, and I click on USB software instrument. And here you can pick whatever, whatever you want. In this case, I want to pick another piano sound. And if you type the word piano over here, you get a whole bunch of different pianos. So I'm going to pick acoustic piano. It's a little bit different than the Steinway brand. And now I have to have this highlighted. When I press record, I'm going to play the right hand. So now I 
press stop. And as you can see, I just added another part to this song, layering another piano on top of this piano, which is really, really cool. And you can do this many, many times with different things. Like let's say I wanted to add some other, some other instrument, like a, like a choir. Let's see, we can add a nice choir sound. And I will pick a um, boys choir, I don't know. And, but in, and if you actually pick a different, a different instrument or a different sound, it will, it will play using the... So what I just played on the piano, now is playing it on a different, on a different instrument. And if you make a mistake, you can go edit, undo, edit, undo, and it will keep doing that until, until it goes back. So right now I have the MIDI recording under acoustic piano. And again, when Hector was saying you can press this button here to disable it and enable it and make it so it shows. Now, one of the neat things is if you mess up. So if you make a mistake, like let's say this note was down here and it sounds horrible because that's in, that's the, that's in the wrong spot. You can take the note and move it in the right direction up and right there, I just deleted it. So I can go edit, undo. I can take it and move it up and put it in the right place. And that's one of the neat things about GarageBand. So I'm gonna show you guys one more thing. Once, it, once you have your song that you want, once you have it created, you, have, you, can, you can share it, you can turn it into an MP3. And I know that was one of the questions in the chat. So if I wanna go here to share, export song to disc, this is how we save the song as an MP3. And here it gives you a whole bunch of different options. Here you can change the name and you can put it where you want it to. I wanna save it right on the desktop, you can. You can choose MP3, which is a file format. These are all different file formats, some slightly larger files than others. And here, if you click on this little button here, you got the different quality. You can save it in a higher quality, this 192 is just fine, but if you wanted it a little bit better, you can put it at 256. And then you click export. So it basically takes the song and makes a, a version of it that when you go to your desktop, and I have it over here, see the song is saved right over here, and you can open it up and play it using, see there's the song that I just, so this particular file format mp3 is is very popular and it's easy to use and one of the things i mean if you if you can get very creative when playing garage band and you can add a whole lot of more different things so right now it's almost time to to end our our presentation. So I'm gonna hand this over to Marlon. And uh, before you do, just quickly show them, uh, I know you have piano roll, but show them the score. Oh, yes. So that if they know how to read music. Yes, yes. More presentation. <laughs> Thank you. No I, more presentation. I, I remember now, if you, if you click on piano roll, you, you, can, you can also change the notes and move them around, but you can also see, you can also see the, the notes as you're playing, and it's really cool. So again, thank you very much for, for coming, and I hope you guys learned something, and definitely come to our, come to our spaces, come to the UMake spaces in the library, and use our equipment, use GarageBand if you don't have it at home, and come, come to us. We'd be very, very happy to, to, to teach you guys if you show up. And thank you so much. And now, now I'm gonna just hand this over to Marlon. All right. Um, we really appreciate you guys coming. And I just really wanna say, I, I enjoyed it. You know, as a musician, 
and uh, you know, a person who does all kind of other stuff from photography and video production and everything. But my first love being music, I love seeing Dinah and Ashley, Jaden, Hector, uh, Edward, just really cool overview of using GarageBand. So we hopefully, hopefully you guys learned a lot of really cool stuff. We are definitely going to be sending you this recording. Um, I'm a little behind, so I'm behind by one week. So I just added the, the uh, recording for the June 5th class onto our YouTube page. So make sure that you check out our YouTube page and you'll be able to see all of the stuff that we're posting on, you know, all of the classes that we've done. You can go ahead and look at those classes again. All right. So next week, what do we got? What are we doing next week, guys? Sam Labs. Sam Labs. Sam Labs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, we do have a very special presentation tomorrow, uh, next week, which is called Sam Labs. And it's going to basically, I spelled that wrong. Sam Labs. <laughs> Sam Labs is basically like uh, steam coding, robotics, engineering, all kind of stuff rolled into one. And we're going to have a special presenter who's going to be presenting this for you guys. So make sure that you come, check your emails, because we're going to be sending you some information about that as well. All right. So thanks again for coming. We'll see you again next week at 4 o'clock on Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Happy Juneteenth. And again, Happy thank you Juneteenth. for coming. And thank you to our library staff. I want to see that Frida Kahlo portrait. Ooh. What? I want to see that self-portrait. Fantastico. That's awesome. Yeah, you guys need to send your stuff to our social media page and we will post it and give you credit and let the world see, you know? Yes. You can be getting an audience for free with us. You guys know people follow our library's social media and those people are following our You Make social media. So send us your stuff. Remember, who is our social media? At you make. Talking too fast. There you go. Send us stuff. Okay, we're one minute away, everybody. That's okay, our teacher. That you know, you could try again, even if you think. But remember, you know, you never know. You just you want to keep it so that you see your process, you know, and your, I'm sorry, your progress as you grow as an artist. So keep even the ones that you think are like, uh, trust me, I have some, some drawings and paintings that I'm just like, ah, but I keep them so that I could see how much I've grown as an artist, you know, and see how, what I've developed. So you want to keep those and continue working. Yeah. And it's super important the f that you even did it just the fact that you did it is incredible because trying new things, learning new things, you got to start out first so you could see where you're starting from. Uh, Noah, send us a link. So uh, you could send us a link, right, on Tinker, uh, Eddie? Yeah. So within Tinker, yes, you can share your projects and send a link to us. You know, there, there is a way to do that. And, we can we can show you how to how to do that. So send us an email and I'll send you instructions on how to do that if you're having trouble. Excellent. 